Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Lowenberg, and I'm here with 35-year ABC News correspondent and host of ABC's What Would You Do, John Quinones. Very good. Thank you for joining us, John. It's good to be here. It's great to be here. So to begin, why is it important to speak to college students about injustice, racism, and bullying? And why is TCNJ an important community to have this discussion with? First of all, I'm glad to be back here because we film many of our scenarios in New Jersey. Oh, really? Uh, because it's so convenient to New York. So yeah. we go to every little town. I think I've been in every single diner in Jersey oh, wow. <laughs> filming our show. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's great to be here and give something back. Uh, this is a great college. Uh, it's mm -hmm. got a great reputation. And I love call, talking to students because these are very divisive times in America, yes, definitely. Uh, in politics and with race issues and certainly religion and yeah. if you're Muslim in this country it's really bad if you're Mexican, not like I am Mexican-American, mm -hmm. you know all this talk about building walls and yeah. so I, I think it's, it's, it's important that we remind folks that this is a great country and that yeah. most people are loving and most people are not racist mm -hmm. and, and also to show them um, that we have work to do when it comes to dealing with these issues. Yeah. We see it and we capture it on hidden camera on what would you do every week. Mm -hmm. We see how some people, st we still need to work on accepting others who are different from us. Yeah. Now your generation and the college generation is better at it, thank God. I I'm inspired by you guys <laughs> yeah. because the world is smaller for you. You know, you, you thanks to the internet, uh, you know gay people and Muslims and Mexicans. And, when I was growing up, you know, there were there was not a single gay person in my high school. Oh, really? Well, there was. But of course there was, out. but they couldn't come out. Uh, and that's the beauty of today's America, mm -hmm. that we can be ourselves. We just need to remind ourselves, especially right now, given what's going on in politics, that... Uh, that uh, we need to work on it a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And not, and not be so judgmental. I agree. When you were in college, did you notice any injustice, racism, or bullying on your campus? And if so, how did you handle that? There wasn't. In San Antonio, Texas, where I grew up, 60% of the population is Hispanic. Oh. So there were a lot of people, certainly in my community, in my side of the tracks, that mm -hmm. looked like me. And, and, and uh, So in that sense, it, you didn't feel it in my immediate community or at my college, St. Mary's University. Mm -hmm. But if we ventured outside the boundaries of our neighborhoods to the north side of town, the wealthier side of town, yeah. then we could see a little bit of uh, sort of, you know, you don't belong here mm -hmm. attitude. Um, you know, kids from my neighborhood didn't date, you know, blonde haired, blue eyed girls from the north side of town. We just didn't mix very much. Mm -hmm. Um, we were poor. I grew up in poverty. I mean, we were migrant farm workers. When I was a kid, we picked tomatoes. We journeyed 1,700 miles and we picked tomatoes in yeah. Michigan, Northport, Michigan, north of Traverse City, way up there uh, for 75 cents a bucket. And I tell this story in my speeches, and you'll hear it today. Uh, and then we picked tomatoes in Ohio. So um, I was the kid who wasn't expected to amount to much. Yeah. I learned English as a second language when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. Up until then, I spoke only Spanish. Mm -hmm. So because of that, because of my accent and because of my dark skin, there were there was some measure of discrimination. Mm -hmm. Not as bad as it was for my father. You know, he remembered picking cotton in South Texas. Oh, wow. and, and there were signs in restaurants, he would tell me, where there was a sign that says, no Mexicans or dogs allowed in this restaurant. So it was... It was really bad in yeah. his generation. With mine, we could. It was more subtle. Mm -hmm. So I did. I did see some of it, and we fought it by just ignoring, ignoring it, and, and looking the other way, and turning the other cheek. And mm -hmm. and of course, it was also during the civil rights movement when I was growing up. So where we staged protests to to complain about situations that seemed unjust. Yeah. That's interesting because you don't really hear much about the Mexican American side of the story either. No, no. So it's very interesting to hear. It's funny, and you know, I was born in Texas, mm -hmm. and my seven generations of my family were born in Texas. Yeah. So, but, but still, I'm Mexican American. So people mm -hmm. come up to me all the time, and they'll say, "John Quinones, you're Mexican American. When did you cross the border?" <laughs> I mean, we've been there hundreds of years. I've been here, yeah. Texas was once part of Spain and yeah. Mexico. So I tell people, I didn't cross the border. The border crossed me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, um, Very yeah. Very interesting. There's work to do. Definitely. Still. What have been some of your most fascinating and telling situations that you set up on what would you do, and what do they say about us as Americans? 
Oh, there have been some funny ones. There's some serious ones. Um, I think generally what they say is that we're all a caring, good people Americans are. I'm still, I see the glasses half full. You know, do we have problems? Yeah, we do. But generally speaking, most people are not racist, and yet we all discriminate. And I do it too, and you do it. When we see something that might be troubling, we make judgments about that yeah. person based on the way they look and the way they're dressed and the accent and their voice, and God forbid they're wearing a turban yeah. or a kufi, and you, know, you, you, you make judgments. So we have to stop ourselves mm -hmm. and think before we, you know, we are so judgmental. Um, but my favorite ones uh, have been the ones that deal with race and religion. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the one where I went undercover myself and I posed as a Mexican day laborer, mm -hmm. and dressed down obviously, and pretended to go into a den I went into a deli, and I wanted to order in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And the guy behind the counter is an actor, yeah. of course, a white guy who starts telling me, you know, listen man, this is America, you got to speak English to be here, we're building a wall to keep you out yeah. of here. So he was saying these ugly things, yeah. and, and I was trying to order in Spanish, mm -hmm. pretending, of course, yeah. to see what other people would say. And it was so inspiring to see people who came to my defense. Mm -hmm. For the most part, there were some who agreed with the racist and said, go to Taco Bell, John, or sir, go to Taco Bell, or go to, maybe you should, you know, go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that hurt, even though I knew we were acting. So that's one of my favorite ones that are serious than dealing yeah. with race. One of my favorite ones that deals that was funnier was when we staged a scenario of someone stealing a bicycle. Okay. And we had a young white kid stealing the bike, cutting the chain, yeah. you know, by the in a park near a jogging path where a lot of people were going by. And when it was a white thief, no one called 911. Mm -hmm. They said something under their breath, they shook their heads, but no one called 911. And then we switch actors. And we had an African-American young man, same age, same dress, with a hacksaw and the wire cutters, mm -hmm. stealing the bike. Within seconds, people surrounded him like a posse. Really? And not only called 911, which they should have done with the other thief, yeah. right? Yeah, they're doing the same exact, exact. thing. Exactly. But not only do they do that, they're taking his picture and video with their cell phones yeah. of the black kid stealing the bike, saying, yeah. we got you now. And then as a final twist, we switch actors again, and we had a very attractive young woman, mm -hmm. you know, beautiful with her hair blowing in the wind, <laughs> short shorts, tight t-shirt, mm -hmm. with the hacks on the wire cutters. Men helped her steal oh the gosh. bike, <laughs> time and again. And it says something about society. Oh, it definitely does. Like, what do you condone? What's Absolutely. So it's fun doing it. Still, we get all kinds of surprising reactions. Oh, I'm sure. Has spending nearly 10 years on what would you do changed the way that you think of how we as Americans deal with everyday injustices, or has the show reaffirmed your beliefs? Uh, I think it, it's reaffirmed my beliefs that this is a great country, and that this is a mosaic in, uh, of all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And certainly up here in the Northeast, in New Jersey, in New York, uh, where we all have to live together, where we all know a Jewish person, mm -hmm. or a Latino, or, or a Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly gay uh, friends, we are more accepting. Mm -hmm. um, when we film the show outside the Northeast, the sort of liberal Northeast, in places like Oklahoma, or Utah, or Wyoming, mm -hmm. where people have never met a Muslim, or a Jewish person, or a Latino, or, you know, they don't have too many gay friends, the reactions are different there. Geography mm -hmm. matters. So that's why we take the show, uh, and even most of the time though, even though we, we film in New Jersey, because yeah. it's more convenient, mm -hmm. we also like to travel with it. So we take it to Utah mm -hmm. and Portland, Oregon, and, and other places in middle America because we want to see how people react. And there, we see more resistance to people who don't seem like they belong in that community. Mm -hmm. So the show reminds me, and I remind the audience by doing it, that mm -hmm. there's work to be done when it comes to, uh, to educating ourselves. Because in the end, racism is based on ignorance. You know, if you don't know a person who is of that race or religion, yeah. you will make assumptions of it. Yeah. And you, we shouldn't. You know. They're just like anybody else. Yeah, if you get to know them. Yeah, exactly. So we shouldn't judge anyone just because of how they look. Or what but it's easier for us here in the Northeast or at a university yeah. like this where you get to meet all kinds. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're living in a secluded little 
town in Utah where the closest person of color lives 100 miles away, mm -hmm. then you have, you have work to do. I never even thought about that in the other states, how mm -hmm. they don't have anybody that's different from them around them. In some pockets of America, that's certainly the case. Yeah. And again, the internet is helping. Mm -hmm. Uh, because if you're a gay person and you're being ostracized in your community in the middle of Wyoming, yeah. then maybe you can communicate with someone who on online who has had those same problems yeah. coming out, and and or watch what would you do? Yeah. We'll show you a scenario where a father is trying to deal with his son coming out. Yeah, and hopefully your show inspires other people to so maybe hope. take a look at how their behavior is. I think it does because you know. Even today, I, I get emails all the time, and on Twitter and Instagram, people saying, John, I had a what would you do moment today. Where were you? I yeah. thought you were going to come out with your cameras, and it's somewhere in, you know, Milwaukee. Or, yeah. Uh, I'm not there, but it's, it's had that effect. And then someone also wrote on social media, the world would be a better place if we all thought John Quinones was in the next room monitoring our yeah. behavior because we would be on our best behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And I've broken the scene sometimes when I come out with the cameras in the open to, you know, to, to divulge that mm -hmm. this has all been part of a TV show. People will tell me the reason those who stepped in and did the right thing, mm -hmm. when I interview them, they'll say the reason I did is because I watch your show yeah. and I promised my kids that if I ever witnessed any kind of injustice, I would be the one to speak up. That's awesome. Uh, so it has, it does have an impact. Um, interestingly enough, Women uh, step in more often than men. I've noticed that. When they see something wrong in society. Uh, it's because, I, I don't know if it's because you got you, the maternal instinct in women or because you're just tougher and, and braver. And you mm -hmm. are. Uh, guys worry about a situation becoming physical. Mm -hmm. so, so we quickly try to analyze whether this guy's going to take a punch at us, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a man. Uh, and women, even though a guy could take a punch at the swing at you, you don't seem to worry about those yeah. things, generally speaking. So it's inspiring the way women step in. That's awesome. Yeah, I've noticed that when I've seen different clips of the show, it is usually a woman. Oh, who yeah. Say something. Especially women in New Jersey. Yeah. They say, they say We're it very loud. Very outspoken, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's interesting. They say it better than in, like in Texas or along the Bible Belt, women are much more demure. And again, I'm generalizing. I yeah. shouldn't generalize. But generally speaking, people are more polite down south. The Southern hospitality. Yeah, they don't yell and they don't, you know, in Jersey, that's not the case. <laughs> Very different. We may not be like the Jersey Shore show, but, but we certainly have some aspects I love of that. the tough I love woman. filming in Jersey because <laughs> the way they speak out. Yeah, it's very cool. Well, John, thank you so much for sitting down with us for LTV News. I love being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. thank you. Very Jen. pleasure to meet you oh, and do this pleasure. interview. All right. For LTV News, I'm Jen Lowenberg. Back to you, Kelsey.